Hi everyone. Today we're going to take a look at the ATAS Power Distribution Board, or ATAS um, board. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's from Atasphere and it's available through Drone Matters. Um, I just got it, so I want to open it up and see what's going on inside. Let's zip it open. My handy dandy X-Acto knife. And look at that beauty. Uh, what a nice piece of work. Very clean looks great. Backside is really clean too. Atosphere. There we go. A lot of features packed into this little board. When you um, take a look at, um, compare it to another board that I have, an Afro board, about the only thing similar is the size. The Afro board's a nice board, but doesn't have uh, nearly the features that the Atosphere board does. I mean it has pluses and minuses on both sides but the Atosphere um, space for up to eight ESC's um, got a, it has a, a line filter um, a 5 volt, 12 volt step downs an awesome little board for the price so we're going to take a closer look at it now. This is uh, one of the interesting sides of the board we're looking at now where your camera and your VTX and your OSD get connected. If you look at the camera in, you can see there's a 12 volt and a 5 volt side um, to match the operating voltages required by your camera. To do that, all you do is put a solder bridge from the 12 volt to the center if you have a 12 volt camera, or from the 5 volt side to the center if you have a 5 volt camera. Now if you look at the VTX next to it, you can see the same sort of reasoning applies. You have a 5 volt side and a 12 volt side and you can just create a solder bridge to the side that you need so your VTX gets the voltage it requires. One of the things you want to do when you're hooking up your VTX to your aircraft is um, put a ferrite ring or two between your power source and your VTX to cut down on some of the interference that creeps into your wires from your power source. Um, the ATAS board or the ATAS board is kind of cool because you really don't need the ferrite rings because it has an inline filter or an LC filter built into the board. So you can just take your ferrite rings and get rid of them if you want. Next up on this feature filled board is the hookup for the OSD or your on screen display. I don't normally use OSD on my 250 racing quads because who the heck has time to look at that information when you're trying to not crash. So if you're not going to use one you just bridge the gap where it says no OSD and you're done with that. But if you want to you hook your yellow signal wire up to the S, your plus and minus is where they're supposed to go and you're done. It's as simple as that. Here you can see the ATIS board also has provisions for 12 volt and 5 volt out power. Uh, the 12 volt can be used for things like LED lights. Um, the 5 volt out can be used for extra servos. The negative pad in the center is where your, your negative wire uh, solders up and then the positive side goes to the 12 or 5 volt side. It's kind of cool. The ATIS board can handle from a 3S to a 6S battery. Uh, 70 amp constant, 110 uh, amp burst. Um, but the one thing that they forgot to label on here clearly was where to hook your uh, power supply up to, like your uh, your 3S, your 6S power supply. And I talked to the manufacturer and they said it's simple enough. Just put it to a positive and a negative port on the ESC pads where that aren't being used. Like this. Just put it right in here, find one that's not being used, and just solder it on the bottom. You can put your ESCs on the top and everybody will be happy and they'll all work together. You can see I just did this as a test. I'm just going to plug a little. There's two LEDs on there, a 5 volt and a 12 volt, that indicate that power is getting to both of those circuits. So I just did a little quick test. Um, and the battery, the lights come on and you're getting power to both circuits. So after you do that, everything from there on out is just uh, soldering up the components where they belong. 